Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our October 18th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, lesson 292. We're reading out of the original edition. A happy outcome to all things is sure. <laughs> Isn't that nice to know? A happy outcome to all things is sure? The question is, are you going to allow it to be now? Or are you going to drag your feet and be stiff-necked and uncircumcised as the Hebrews were called back when Moses led them out of the, out of the uh, land of bondage into the promised land of freedom? That's all a picture, you know, of this uh, entering into our rest, entering into uh, our freedom where, where we can truly say a happy outcome to all things is sure. A happy outcome to all things is sure. God's promises make no exceptions, and he guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. <laughs> that should make you smile and happy, huh? Believe that promise. And you know, when you're going through some trials and you're not seeing the happiness Know that it, it, it's, it's the sure result. It's what you will experience is happiness. And how can I say this? Um, you don't need to, 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 to make it be a long ways off. As soon as you're willing to... Well, he's going to say that right here. He says, He guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. Yet it is up to us when this is reached, how long we let an alien will appear to be opposing his. And while we think this will is real, we will not find the end he has appointed as the outcome of all problems we perceive, all trials we see, and every situation that we meet. Yet is the ending certain. For God's will is done in earth and heaven. Now that's nice to know. God's will is done in earth and heaven. It's being done right now. And we seek and we will find according to his will, which guarantees that our will is done. Like my wife told me in that dream after she left this planet, she came back and she told me, she said, I can't ever come back to you. Don't even want to. <laughs> She said, but there's only one thing keeping us separate. And she says, I see all things as beautiful now. You still think there's some ugly things. She said, you need to feel the beauty in every person, place, thing, and situation. And when you've done that, you'll be where I'm at. And you don't have to die to get there. <laughs> anyway, her name was Diane. I've told you a little bit about her. She was very helped. That, that, that dream very much helped me. We will seek and we will find according to his will, which guarantees that our will is done. We thank you, Father, for your guarantee of only, how, of only happy outcomes in the end. We thank you, Father, for your guarantee of only happy outcomes in the end. Help us not interfere and so delay the happy endings you have promised us for every problem that we can perceive. For every problem we even can perceive. For every trial we think we still must meet. <laughs> so when you're going through your next trial, it's going to lose a little bit of its, um, of its bite just by telling yourself, well, a happy outcome to all things is sure. A happy outcome to all things is sure. All right, let's uh, go take a look at our text reading. And we're ready for the extension of the kingdom, which is uh, section 10 in chapter 7, the consistency of the kingdom. And while you're turning there, let me tell you about these uh, winter squashes. This is a a butternut squash, and butternut squash, uh, a cucurbita machata, uh, 
it's a winter squash. And a winter squash just means that you usually pick them towards the end of the summer. But, but a lot of squashes, winter squashes, will grow all, you can pick them early on. They, they mature. You can get them any time during the summer. But they, the ones you pick later in the, at, towards the end of the summer, they, they have a unique quality of having a pretty strong uh, skin on them. And they'll last all winter. So, you know, keep them in a cool place, out of the sunshine. And, um, and it, we, we, you know, I, I heat with wood, so I just put them in a far back bedroom. And they tend, and they won't freeze that way. You don't want them to freeze. And, um, or you can put them in a cellar, which I, I sometimes put them in a cellar. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, just keep them in a cool place, and they'll last for months. All right. Uh, a couple things about... Uh, all your squashes, they have, they're high in antioxidants. Uh, squashes and pumpkins are all, are all cucurbita machatas. Uh, so they're, you know, the, the, they're just different varieties. As a matter of fact, in Australia, they call these uh, 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 butternut pumpkins. So pumpkins and squashes are all the same uh genus and species with lots of variations, lots of cultivars. Uh, anyway, I, I say squash is high in antioxidants. It's rich in fiber, rich in vitamins and minerals. Uh, and since it's high in antioxidants, uh, I found on, uh, I think it was on WebMD that it said that it uh, may help to uh, be a cancer preventative. Uh, it's low in calories, which you know, if you don't want to, if you don't, you're not trying to eat a lot of calories. That's an ideal food. Fill you up, but not 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 fill you out, but fill you up. <laughs> uh, it says that a cup has 63 calories. Compare that to orange juice, you know, and 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 uh, orange juice is 111 calories. Most of your soda drinks, which I wouldn't recommend drinking are you know, usually about 120 calories. So they're gonna be twice as much per cup as uh, a squash. So you know, be, be easy on you. Don't, you know, a lot of times people that are trying to lose weight don't realize that, um, th that you're, what you're drinking can have a lot of calories in it. So beware, just because it doesn't have solidness doesn't mean it can't put bulk on you. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a look now at uh, the extension of the kingdom. Only you can limit your creative power, but God wills to release it. He no more wills you to deprive yourself of your creations than he wills to deprive himself of his. Do not withhold your gifts to the sonship or you withhold yourself from God. Selfishness is of the ego, but self-fullness is of the soul because that is how God created it. The Holy Spirit is the part of the mind that lies between the ego and the soul, mediating between them always in favor of the soul. To the ego, this is partiality, and it therefore responds as if it were the part that is being cited against. <laughs> to the soul, this is truth, <laughs> because it knows its fullness and cannot conceive of any part from which it is excluded. <laughs> oh my goodness, isn't that something? So the, uh, the, the uh, ego thinks it's being cited against, and since the, the soul only knows what's true, then it doesn't even know it's siding against it, it just knows what's true. Which means the ego is not true. 92. The soul knows that the consciousness of all its brothers is included in its own, as it is included in God. Let's remember that. The soul knows that the consciousness, or the mind, of all its brothers is included in its own, as it is included in God. The power of the whole sonship and of its creator is therefore the soul's only fullness, rendering its creations equally whole and equal in perfection. The ego cannot prevail against a totality which includes God, and any totality must include God. <laughs> isn't, that, 
if it's a totality, well then God has to be part of it, doesn't it? That's a nice way to look at it. Everything he created is given all his power because it is part of him and shares his being with him. Creating is the opposite of loss. Creating is the opposite of loss as blessing is the opposite of sacrifice. So creative creation is the opposite of loss and blessing is the opposite of sacrifice. So be sure to keep those in your mind. Being must be extended. Being must be extended. That is how it retains the knowledge of itself. 93. The soul yearns to share its being as its creator did. Created by sharing, its will is to create. It does not wish to contain God, but to extend his being. The soul yearns to share its being as its creator did. Created by sharing, its will is to create. It does not wish to contain God, but to extend his being. The extension of God's being is the soul's only function. Amazing, huh? The extension of God's being to extend God, to increase God, to the extension, or remember we used the word projection the other day? The extension of God's being or the projection or the increasing of God's being is the soul's only function. Its fullness cannot be contained any more than can the fullness of its creator. Fullness is extension. Reminds me of uh, my cup runneth over there in Psalm 23 or uh, Luke uh, 6. I think it, maybe it's Luke 6 where he talks about that uh, our, our, a, a cup overflows with uh, blessing. Its fullness cannot be contained any more can the fullness of its creator. Fullness is extension. The ego's whole thought system blocks extension and thus blocks your only function. It therefore blocks your joy. You want to know why you don't have joy? Because you're not extending your, your own creation. The way you were created, you're now supposed to go and create in, in God's likeness. He blessed you, now you bless others. Look at it that way. That's just one of many applications. It therefore blocks your joy. And that is why you perceive yourself as unfulfilled. Unless you create, you are unfulfilled. Got to have a purpose. Unless you create, you are unfulfilled. But God does not know of unfulfillment and therefore you must create. <laughs> you may not know your own creations, but this can no more interfere with their reality then your unawareness of your soul can interfere with its being. You may not know what you're creating, but it's still, it's still happening. You've just, you're still creating. You might as well know what you're creating. Get your vibration in harmony with uh, love, and, uh, and you're going to come to feel that joy, and, know what, and you're going to know again what you had forgotten. 94. <clears throat> The kingdom is forever extending because it is in the mind of God. You do know your joy because you do not know your own selffulness. Excuse me, I read that wrong. You do not know your joy because you do not know your own selffulness. Exclude any part of the kingdom from yourself and you are not whole. A split mind cannot perceive its fullness and needs the miracle of its wholeness to dawn upon it and heal it. The miracle of its wholeness. Okay, so make, remember, once you realize that you're whole, that takes a miracle to know that. And remember, there's no order of difficulty in miracles. And that's one of the miracles that you want. The miracle-mindedness to know that you're whole and that you'll be filled with joy then, where you'll be aware that you're, you're filled with joy. This reawakens the, let's back up, a split mind cannot perceive its fullness and needs the miracle of its wholeness to dawn upon it and heal it. 
This reawakens the wholeness in it and restores it to the kingdom because of its acceptance of wholeness. The full appreciation of its self-fullness makes selfishness impossible and extension inevitable. <laughs> that is why there is perfect peace in the kingdom. Every soul is fulfilling its function, and only complete fulfillment is peace. Let's look. Let's uh, let's go one more. Let's let's back up. The full appreciation of its self-fullness makes selfishness impossible and extension inevitable. That is why there is perfect peace in the kingdom. Every soul is fulfilling its function, and only complete fulfillment is peace. You want peace? Well, you got to find your purpose and fulfill it. Be in harmony with it. Be aware of it. And 95. Insanity appears to add to reality, but no one would claim that what it adds is true. <laughs> Insanity is therefore the non-extension of truth, which blocks joy because it blocks creation and, then, and thus blocks fulfillment. The unfulfilled must be depressed because their self-fullness is unknown to them. The unfulfilled must be depressed because their self-fullness is unknown to them. Your creations are protected for you because the Holy Spirit, who is in your mind, knows of them and can bring them into your awareness whenever you will let him. They are there as part of your own being because your fulfillment includes them. The creations of every son of God are yours since every creation belongs to everyone being created for the sonship as a whole. Okay, I think we'll stop there and we'll be ready for paragraph 96 tomorrow. Now let's go take a look at uh, what is the real world. That's our 10-day reading under today's lesson 292. A happy outcome to all things is sure. What is the real world? The real world is a symbol like the rest of what perception offers, yet it stands for what is opposite to what you made. Your world is seen through eyes of fear and brings the witnesses of terror to your mind. The real world cannot be perceived except through eyes forgiveness blesses, so they see a world where terror is impossible and witnesses to fear cannot be found. The real world holds a counterpart for each unhappy thought reflected in your world, a sure correction for the sights of fear and sounds of battle which your world contains. The real world shows a world seen differently, through quiet eyes and with a mind at peace. Nothing but rest is there. There are, there are no cries of pain and sorrow heard, for nothing here remains outside forgiveness. And the sights are gentle. Only happy sights and sounds can reach the mind that has forgiven itself. What need has such a mind for thoughts of death, attack, and murder? What can it perceive surrounding it but safety, love, and joy? What is there it would choose to be condemned? And what is there that it would judge against? The world it sees arises from a mind at peace within itself. No danger lurks in anything it sees, for it is kind, and only kindness does it look upon. The real world is the symbol that the dream of sin and guilt is over, and God's Son no longer sleeps. His waking eyes perceive the sure reflection of His Father's love, the certain promise that He is redeemed. The real world signifies the end of time, for its perception makes time purposeless. The Holy Spirit has no need of time when it has served His purpose, now he waits but that one instant more 
for God to take his final step and time has disappeared, taking perception as, with it as it goes and leaving but the truth to be itself. That instant is our goal, for it contains the memory of God. And as we look upon a world forgiven, it is He who calls to us and comes to take us home, reminding us of our identity, which our forgiveness has restored to us. <laughs> okay, and yesterday I said even the real world passes away. And what I really meant to say is that in the Course, we understand that the real world appears to be like it's where we're reaching to in miracle-mindedness, but it's still the world of perception. And at some point, we, we, we recognize that, um, that we exist without perception. Maybe I could say it that way. That uh, when we can, we're, 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 what our goal is is to contain the memory of God. And I kind of see that on our way to the memory of God, the world becomes incredibly beautiful because we see it as it really is, um, a reflection of our kindness that we're offering, that God is living through us. Okay. Um, a happy outcome to all things is sure. God's promises make no exceptions. And he guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. Okay, remember, no exceptions to that. A, a happy outcome. It doesn't matter how tragic it seemed. There's a happy outcome. And you don't have to wait. You, you, can, you can be patient and wait for it if that helps. You can claim it now. But that is the truth. And you'll be a journey without distance when you finally see it you'll realize you've always had that joy, that happy outcome. God's promises make no exception, and He guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. Yet it is up to us when this is reached, how long we let an alien will appear to be opposing His. Okay, it's only in appearances that we are seeming to be in opposition to love and not seeing the blessings of creation all around us. And while we think this will is real, we will not find the end he has appointed as the outcome of all problems we perceive, all trials we see, and every situation that we meet. Yet is the ending certain? For God's will is done in earth and heaven, and we seek and we will find according to His will, which guarantees that our will is done. We thank you, Father, for your guarantee of only happy outcomes in the end. Help us not interfere and so delay the happy endings you have promised us for every problem that we can perceive. For every trial, we think we still must meet. A happy outcome to all things is sure. And like I was telling you, that what my wife came and told me in that dream, learn to see every person, place, thing, and situation as beautiful. And we can do that easily when we recognize that a happy outcome to all things is sure. This is a day of stillness and peace was yesterday. Uh, last couple days, my present happiness is all I see. The past is over, it can touch me not. All these affirmations are pointing to this same realization that, uh, that God is present and joy is present, love is present, good is present. A happy outcome to all things is sure. Claim it today. A happy outcome. To all things is sure. <laughs>